Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack. I recently bought one of these cheap spectrum analyzers from the Far East, uh, cost about 50 GBP including delivery. Um, there's been some recent posts on some social media and some forums about this device so I thought I'd do a quick review really and ask the question is this thing any good? We'll have a quick look inside, I've, mine came with the case, you can buy them just as a circuit board or you can buy them cased. Mine came cased but I've taken it to bits. We'll have a quick look at what's on the circuit board to figure out how this is is working. I'll have a look at the software that it came with um, that's supplied for PC control. Then I'll have a play with some alternative software which you can get from a website called vma-satellite.blogspot.com and then we'll also have a look at what you can do if you combine it with one of these also very cheap from the Far East return loss bridges. So let's get on with it. So the first thing I did was took my uh, spectrum analyzer apart and the board that I'm showing you here is basically the same as mine except one of the devices is rotated but the concepts are identical. Mine has also got the four LED positions populated. Uh, the PCB itself slides in and out of the metal case it was supplied in. There's nothing holding it in the case. It physically fits inside. So first off we've got a processor on board. And for those of you who are playing along at home, this is an STM32F103C8T6 processor, which is clocked at 8 MHz. So these are from ST Microelectronics, and they're a truly amazing device for such a low cost. Pretty damn incredible, really. I've got an evaluation board here using this chip, which I might do a video on later, because it's compatible with the uh, Arduino IDE, and it's really quite powerful and will support sort of double precision floating point and various other things. The processor will clearly contain some soft or, as it's called these days, firmware, which will do the control of the onboard devices. And there's also clearly an onboard provision of a UART connection. I would imagine this would be to program the processor itself. Next we've got an ADF4351 which is used as the tracking generator. So this is generating RF under software control and outputting it to the tracking generator connection. This has got an onboard 25 megahertz clock. There's also a second ADF4351 which is used to sweep the RF spectrum, the output of which is then mixed with the input signal. Uh, my assumption would be that this is clocked using the same 25 megahertz oscillator. Then we've got an analog device's logarithmic amplifier which will basically convert the output of the mixer to a DC voltage proportional to its magnitude, but it'll do that logarithmically. It's worth noting that the ADF4351 device alone is £15 GBP to purchase from a reputable component supplier in the UK. So quite how I can get this board with two of those, the processor and the logarithmic amplifier, all for 50 quid delivered in a box, is kind of beyond me. And finally, there's this CH340 USB to serial device which is facilitating comps with the PC. So welcome to what I call my lab PC. This has got a load of software development and various other bits and bobs on it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect the Spectrum Analyzer USB device to the computer. Um, and we'd expect to see a COM port appear and install. And lo and behold, we've just got a new serial port appear, which is COM4. The other thing I've done here is I've got a very old Hewlett Packard for anyone playing at home, it's an 8648A signal generator, which I've set up to generate a 145 megahertz AM carrier at minus 10 dBm. I've coupled that into my Regal, uh, I guess they're a thousand pound plus spectrum analyzer, and that's set with a span of 10 megahertz, center frequency of 145, and the marker on that is measuring minus 10.56 dBm. So I've got that signal at the end of a cable on the bench that I can swap from the Regal to the USB device. So we can just use that as a test, as an example. So the software that came with it is this stuff here, WinNWT4.N. So COM5 cannot be open. That's because I've been fiddling with the options. So if we go in here to the, uh, it's not in there. Let me get this right settings options and i go to here interface com4 we said it was so that's okay right so what i'm going to do now i've told it where the com port is 
I'm going to set this up to scan from 140 and you have to put this in in Hertz which is kind of inconvenient 140 to 150 so that's 140 to 150 megahertz I'm going to try and go with the maximum number of samples and that appears to be 9999 I can't put a bigger number in there if I do it comes back and changes it back to 9999 so if we do that and we hit the continuous scan or rather let's just do a single scan we should see a sweep over here on the right hand side now I haven't got the RF connected at the moment so I just want to show you the kind of speed that this will run at when it's taking 10,000 samples effectively across a 10 megahertz spectrum so it's fairly flat and fairly clean so I'll now connect my minus 10 dBm 145 megahertz signal to the front RF in connector and let's do a scan once again so we're kind of seeing my signal but I'm, I'm immediately confused and concerned as to why I've got a great big notch in the center of it and I'm very very confident that, that notch doesn't really exist but I've done some reading up on this and what it's basically what I've basically established is that any signal that's got a bandwidth of less than 100 kilohertz is going to have this problem in that the the architecture of this spectrum analyzer is going to implement a notch in the center of it so that notch is artificial and isn't there but unfortunately if I ask it so there's a number of different options you can say around here so for example this 3db I don't know whether you and hopefully you can see it's added two red markers to the spectrum and given me some various extra bits of information in this summary screen so what it's done it's basically found the peak of my signal and measured to the point where the signal is 3 dB down either side of the peak put a marker there and told me what the frequency of those 3 dB points is but unfortunately it's done that around this artificial notch so this bandwidth of this 3 dB width is completely wrong that, that's absolutely not what's going on here at all so I've changed the RF being generated by the signal generator now to be a signal of around, well it's exactly 500 megahertz at minus 10 dBm. So again we could do a complete sweep across this spectrum but we'd need to increase the frequency here. So let's do a single sweep from 35 megahertz up to 1 gigahertz. And it does look like it's found one signal and one signal only at around 500 megahertz now this is where it gets quite tricky because I can't use the scroll wheel or anything to try and change where my cursor is I have to just click and I can't for the life of me get that to sit on top of ah I've managed it right more by luck than judgment so 499.631570 megahertz minus 18 dBm well we know that's not true also so let's go 450 megahertz to 550 megahertz do a single sweep there right now we're seeing something a bit more sensible again it's very difficult to get the cursor to click on top of the the actual peak on the the span that we can see here um, this is saying minus 7.8 dBm it, it's clearly peaking higher than the minus 10 dBm of the signal but I kind of guess it's okay let's try that again but let's um, put the samples at maximum and uh, see what we what this looks like when we scan at this speed it'll be a lot slower because of the fact that it's taking 10,000 samples but again immediately you can see that this has got a notch down the center of it I really really I don't like that at all um, so the signal looks like it's split into two peaks but it absolutely absolutely isn't So I'm going to talk very quickly about return loss and return loss measurements. Now the return loss bridge that I pictured at the beginning I've now got connected up to the USB spectrum analyzer. I'll drop a picture in about now of what this test setup looks like because it's in my true Heath Robinson fashion it's very bodged together on the bench but the tracking generator or the RF output from the USB device is connected to the input port the output port is connected back to the RF in. Now there's two parts to the return loss bridge. There's a device under test or DUT socket, which is where we'll connect our antenna that we're going to measure. And there's also a reference socket. And that's 
where you need to connect something of a known impedance at the frequency that you're interested in. So for us radio geeks that's a 50 ohm load but you have to connect a 50 ohm load to the reference port that you know is working well and offers a good 50 ohm match at the appropriate frequency. So what I've got connected to the device under test port is uh, SG Labs PCB based antenna for 23 centimeters. So it's a small circuit board that's got some tracks in it that makes, I think it's like an HB9CV type antenna for 23 centimeters. I've set this up now. There's a button on the back of the USB device labeled key. Press that and another LED comes on to tell me that the tracking generator is enabled. You must need do you must do that as well. I've set my start frequency start frequency to be a thousand megahertz. I've discovered I can put an M on the end and we're going to sweep to 1400 megahertz. I've got 5000 samples and it's in sweep mode. So let's do a single sweep and let's see what this looks like. So this is the output of my return loss bridge and lo and behold we've got a good dip in the spectrum and that dip is showing me where the, where the lowest or the, the biggest return loss is for this antenna. Now that at this particular frequency which is 1266 megahertz it's measuring a, a, a level of minus 51.2 db now when i also did a sweep without the device under test connected which i'm going to do again now so i'm removing the antenna connection so that port the dut port is now wide open i'm going to sweep this again and I'm going to put my minus 51. I've created a quick spreadsheet here. So at the moment, minus 15.8 without the antenna connected. Let's call that minus 16. With the antenna connected, it was minus 51. The difference is 35 dB. So I think the return loss of this antenna at this frequency of 1266 megahertz is 35 dB. If we take that 35 dB as the RL figure, as the return loss figure, for the, for the equation that we use to convert from return loss to VSWR and we apply that equation we get an SWR of 1.0362921. Now this software that came with this spectrum analyzer has got an option here where I can actually select SWR okay and this has got some crazy crazy reading of SWR of 3 to 1 and I have no idea really of what this is trying to do and the other thing that I don't understand is how it can attack well now I've swept it it's given me a completely different answer that's quite interesting but what I don't think it knows is where the open uh, return loss is so I just don't see how it can calculate what the delta is so I think it's assuming that that is probably zero which is why it's getting close to one to one I don't think this is calculating accurately I just don't see how it is because you need to calibrate it based on the return loss bridge with no either a short circuit or an open circuit so that it can work out what the delta is and I, I just don't see how that can possibly be doing it so I wouldn't I wouldn't trust this I don't think but I'll make I'll put a link into this um, spreadsheet it's very simple just implementing the equation and I think if you then measure the um, measure the return loss with the open port and then measure it again with the device under test connected I think this will be a, quite an accurate way of working out SWR So this is a piece of alternative software that you can use with this device, um, vma-satellite.blogspot.com uh, is where the software comes from. You have to email the guy, the author, and ask him for a registration code of some sort, and I believe if you decide that you want to use the software, you should be sending him a 10 euro donation. Um, it's kind of the same functionality really so all of the faults that we saw on the other thing like the the notch for example within the peaks um, that still exists because that's to do with the architecture of, the, of the, the spectrum analyzer rather than the actual software itself but for example you can set this up to do a fairly nice continuous sweep it's got some slightly better marker capabilities and it's also got a waterfall down the bottom here where you can see it gives you a colored uh, waterfall type display. Now what I'm going to do very quickly is swap over the cables uh, so that we can have a look at what this looks like with um, 
with some RF going into it rather than with the uh, return loss bridge connected. So if I connect back up our minus 30 dBm uh, signal to the RF input connector of this uh, device and then perhaps we try and find the uh, so if I now stop it and let's say we're going to start at 800 megahertz no that's silly we're going to start at 400 megahertz and we're going to stop at 600 megahertz let's do that again and let's just see what it looks like so you see there's my RF peak that I've got here um, I think the signal is at uh, minus 30 dBm. This is looking much more like minus 35 dBm. This is the waterfall that's being created of the signal here. So you can see there's just one small amount of waterfall here. Uh, if we were to maybe make this a bit uh, 475, let's make this up to um, 525 megahertz. We can see it a lot closer if we do that. But again, you're beginning to see the notch that I talked about. Now this has a feature somewhere you can tick a box here notch and it seems to try and draw a line across somehow it, it's trying to compensate for the notch being imposed in the architecture but it's not doing a very very good job to be honest with you I haven't played with this software in any great um, in any great detail uh, I've noticed that sort of in the setup tab for example you can set up predefined frequency ranges and do some useful things. The PayPal logo appears all over the place. There's some calibration stuff, but it seems to want you to use this particular attenuator, which you can go and get from eBay somewhere. Uh, again, it talks about if we were to say, uh, measure from 450 to 550 megahertz and we were to say measure it says minus 53.67 dBm but again I know that my signal is at minus 30 dBm so I'm really not too sure uh, what this is trying to do for me um, it's not minus 51 dBm so I, I really don't know and sweep generator harmonic signal source signal source lots of things here kind of the same stuff that was available in the other software plus some nicer features and some other bits and bobs but it's still got the same fundamental problems so i think this spectral analyzer works well if you want to look at where's my rf roughly if you wanted to take some accurate um, rf measurements or you wanted to for example look at a carrier and some sidebands on a single sideband transmission or something like that then it just can't do that kind of resolution bandwidth but for 40 or 50 quid, it's really quite good fun.